<laughs> hey, welcome back to another video. Baron and I had the opportunity to attend the Fjall Raven Classic USA 2022, a three-day backpacking trip through the Colorado Rocky Mountains. Fjall Raven is a Swedish trekking brand founded in the 1960s by Ake Norden, who sought to create an outdoor gear company that would make nature more accessible to more people. You might know of the popular Fjall Raven Konkin backpack. The Fjall Raven Classic is an international trekking event. Maintaining the mission to encourage more Swedes to get outside, in 2005, Ake and his not yet internationally famed company that it is today, chose a legendary long distance path in Sweden and provided a guided and accessible trekking experience for 152 hikers. Today, over 2,000 people join the Sweden Classic each year. More joining classics held in Denmark, Germany, the US, UK, Hong Kong, and Korea. It's not a competition, it's not a race, unless you're this guy, we'll get back to him. It's a chance to trek with other like-minded hikers through the great outdoors, having the backpacking experience of a lifetime. Hiking with other hikers. That idea stuck out to us initially. Over our five years of nomadic living, the goal was honestly to avoid crowds. State parks, national parks, festivals, and events we tended to avoid. Not because we don't like people, we cherish our friends and family and those we've met on the road, but because nature brings a feeling of peace and solitude that you just can't find anywhere else. And we try to preserve that feeling by escaping deep into the forest where we're hard to find. We found Fjallraven along our nomadic journey. The gear and the clothing was the most durable and sustainable we could find for the rugged lifestyle we were living. When living in such a small space with two people and a dog, you cannot have an excess of anything, specifically clothes. Because you have so few options, you are wearing the same clothes over and over and over again. Not to mention we're super hard on our clothes. With regular clothes getting worn out and deteriorating before our eyes, we each invested in a few pieces of Fjallraven gear, noting their durability from our favorite bushcrafters and survivalists online. Fjallraven does not compromise on quality of gear and wherever possible uses organic, renewable, recycled, and traceable materials. Not only that, but the gear holds a lifetime warranty with in-store repairs. Now, obviously I'm making a Fjallraven video and this might sound like a Fjallraven ad, but that is not really my intention. We wish we would have known about Fjallraven sooner before we got into our travels. So we're just trying to do you a favor here if you're interested. After a few years of wearing Fjallraven gear in the backcountry, we reached out to the amazing humans at the Fjallraven Denver store to see how we could collaborate. And now we are local guides for the store. The local guide program is a sort of ambassadorship where we participate in events, workshops, and meetups all centered around getting people outside. Okay, enough prefacing, let's get to the hike. The evening before the hike, everyone was invited to camp at the Trekkers Inn, where they loaded us up with a bunch of swag from the companies who were sponsoring the event. We got cooking fuel, water filters, backpacking food, and snacks. Can't even raise my hand. There was a station where last minute gear could be purchased, dinner and drinks were shared, and activities were provided to give us all a chance to get to know our fellow hikers. <laughs> At the opening fireside chat, speakers educated us on the unique history of the terrain we'd be hiking, encouraging us not to geotag our location in order to preserve the delicate ecosystem. The phrase we use is a good campsite uh, found and not made. The Leave No Trace organization was a big player in this entire event, educating us on the best practices for leaving no trace. If you can make it to your point B by walking on gravel or rock or sand, we ask that you do so, um, because it doesn't take many people to make a, a trail. I was really impressed by this. I was kind of expecting more advertising, like more of a make sure you've got your Fjall Raven pants on, best pants ever, yada yada. But instead it was just, hey, we're going backpacking, respect the land, know the history, and enjoy. We chose to camp in our car at Trekkers Inn so we wouldn't have to set up our tent. There was a light breakfast provided for everyone, but I don't think that I ate. I was so nervous. Excited too, but pretty nervous. We all loaded up onto our shuttle buses and they drove us an hour into the mountains and dropped us off on a dirt road where we started our hike. The months leading up to this hike, we'd gone on zero backpacking trips, putting all our time and effort into building our house off grid in the southern high Rockies of Colorado. 
We were a little trepidatious about the prospect of hiking over 30 miles in three days, unsure if we'd be able to keep up. Day one consisted of 8.9 total miles with an elevation gain of over 2,000 feet, and our first checkpoint was 5.3 miles in. And we are off. We have started the classic. Yeah. The checkpoints were unlike anything I've ever experienced on a backpacking trip and something I was not expecting. It was a place to set down our packs, chit chat and rest, but even more, there were all these booths set up with awesome snacks, kombucha on tap, and plenty of water. It was like a reward and a party for finishing half of the day's hike. We just left checkpoint one. I feel like a new woman. <laughs> <laughs> Caffeinated and highly sugary gummies, so let's ride it's this so out. so nice having all these awesome snacks whenever we stop. That's, I'd say, probably the coolest part about this, is all of the really high quality food that we don't have to carry. Oh, that's good. <laughs> And then that I did, and I was like, we're taking a break. Thank you. This is Eric. Eric. Hi. He works for Fjallraven. His mission was to complete the classic carrying only what he could fit in his yellow Konkin backpack. And spoiler alert, even though the classic is not a race, he was awarded a spiritual gold medal for finishing the 2022 Classic USA in first place. How are you feeling? Not tired. Not tired at all? <laughs> the last couple of miles of day one were pretty brutal and we were happy to complete the day's hike, set down our packs and find a spot for our tent. <laughs> right here? That looks good. The tent that we brought was Baron's 10-year-old two-person marmot tent. We split it up between us. I hiked with the poles and stakes, and he hiked with the tent and ground cover. We each brought a sleeping bag. Mine's a big Agnes, and Baron's is Fjallraven. We both brought a sleeping pad, a collapsible pillow, a foldable butt pad for sitting on, and we both hiked with our Kifaru hunting packs. It's kind of nice that it's raining so we have an excuse to just lay here because I wanted to lay here. I wish we could have a fire. Mm -hmm. Even if it was just one community fire, that'd be really nice. I wonder if it's because of the group size or if there's a fire being happening. They said even if local jurisdiction allowed a fire, we couldn't have one because of the group size. It makes so much sense. If everybody was just blazing up here, it'd be a problem. But if we could have one fire for everyone, that'd be tight. You could be the fire tender. Fire starter. Twisted fire starter. Ree -me 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 -me.
We are on day two of the classic. Yeah. The Fjall Robin classic. Feeling very good. Morale is high. This first two miles is really high. Very steep hike. We chose not to make any breakfast. We're just gonna eat trail mix and bars. We're thinking like we'll do what you did on the AT and stop after 30 minutes or something and stretch for a little bit, drink some water and then get going again. Taking it easy since our bodies are cold. Day two, the hike was 11.8 miles or 7.8 if you chose not to take the optional lake route. If you don't remember or haven't seen the video of my first ever backpacking trip, now with almost 2 million views, I learned this great warm up routine for a long day of backpacking. Step one, hike 15 minutes hideously slow. Step two, hike 15 more minutes very slow. Step three, take a minimum five minute butt break. Step four, stretch. Extra credit, take a five minute butt break every hour the rest of the hike and you will very likely enjoy an injury free day. Yesterday as we were watching the music, I was daydreaming about the idea and like what it would take to get onto this ridge. I had no idea we were gonna hike it, but there's a tree up here that I was just, it's right here. Daydreaming about going to sea and seeing how tall I was next to it. And here we are. <laughs> You're so cute. I'm excited to see all these pika. I just read an article on them and they're an indicator species indicating the health of like a above tree line sort of tundra environment. And I think this is where Pikachu comes from because it's like Pikachu. It's indicating that this is a healthy environment. Like if you start logging an area or there's too much foot traffic or whatever, then supposedly the pika population will take a hit. So to see so many of them up here is a great indication that this is a healthy wilderness area. There's an optional lake hike that we're gonna do. It's two miles down, two miles up. We dropped off our packs. We're keeping our little day pack with towel and stuff because we're totally gonna get in the lake. I don't know if I'm getting in Come the on, lake. Come on, you're gonna get in. It's so, it's cool Come today. On. Like I'm cold right now. I am. <laughs> Elsa's so tough. Give us a quick sprint. Sick. And now the sun's out, it's perfect. <laughs> you were right. Just left checkpoint two, we have four or five miles till campsite number two. Here we go! Downhill. All downhill from here, dude. Baron was feeling great, and it was at this point that he turned on his favorite music and became a Speed Racer 3000. I was doing my best to keep up by casually sprinting behind him. I just thought I would document the first moment that Baron has ever enjoyed through hiking a little bit more than Elsa. Uh, this is one for the books. I'm enjoying it. I just kind of am curious if it will ever end. <laughs> and I'm having so much fun. It turns out that carrying 40 pound bricks, one in each hand, for days on end uh, at 8,300 feet is good for your cardiovascular strength. So if you want a good workout for hiking, carry cinder blocks. Oh, 
we set up the tent. It was just like yesterday. The rain started right as we were setting up the tent. I needed to eat something. You're getting a little hangry. Just a little bit. <coughs> Scratch is one of the companies sponsoring this event, and they make all of their products in Boulder. It's just, a, honestly, just different high-quality versions of sugar for athletic activity. They're gummies. Oh, my goodness. Their gummies are so good. These ones have 50 milligrams of caffeine. They say that they're really fast. Yeah fast absorption with these guys and it's so true whenever we were just needing a pick-me-up these guys hit the freaking spot and they're super limited ingredients all made in boulder colorado it's we're really really impressed with this brand the only problem is they didn't have any of these on the trail today <laughs> so what do you call your index toe we talked about this yesterday he's like my index toe feels hot and i'm like okay index. did you know what i was talking about uh, or i said my or my pointer toe no first you said your index toe yeah i feel like that's obvious it was obvious when i like index toe okay, no, is you, that your, you is, just call it toe number one no i call it toe number two because i had to think index is that your are you talking about your big toe or your second toe well, because that's what i call from the left or the right big toe second toe third toe fourth toe pinky who's with me so pinky has a name the rest of them don't deserve that do you disagree what do you call your middle toe my middle toe what do you call your fourth toe my ring toe <laughs> obviously <laughs> they all got names Speaking of toes, this was another piece of swag that we got. It's just wool. If you had a hot spot anywhere on your feet, you'd rub a little bit of this onto your sock, and it just gave the perfect touch of padding to prevent blisters. So cool and simple. After some rain and some rest, we enjoyed a cup of afternoon coffee. Yeah, that is really good. That's strong. On this hike, we each brought a little cook pot, a pocket rocket stove, sporks, and Primus supplied us with cooking fuel. We were all given enough of these backpacking meals for lunch and dinner each day, but because snacks and hot food were provided on top of that, Baron and I only brought one mountain house meal with us on the trail and never ate it. We also brought a few snacks from home that we didn't eat on the trail either. For water, Grail supplied everyone with a filtering water bottle. It was really nice to be able to filter cold, fresh water along the trail, but they also supplied water at every stop, so we kept a little water in our camelbacks at all times too. Another heavy thing you normally have to carry a lot of that we didn't. It was the afternoon of day two that we really started feeling a sense of community throughout the group. Ultra high caliber people, lots of professionals from all walks of life and from all over the world. I am originally from Hungary, and right now I'm here in the U.S. in Denver. I'm from Michigan. I am from Longmont, Colorado. Dallas, Texas. Colorado. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I'm from Tyler, Texas. I'm from Chicago. I'm from the Netherlands. I'm from Winter Park, Florida. I am from Denver, Colorado. We're, We're from, from Los, Los Angeles. Angeles. I am from Texas. Golden Valley, Minnesota. I am from San Francisco. I'm from Houston. I'm from Mexico City. And I'm from Sweden. And I'm from Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> Being on the trail really humanizes people. Everyone's out there to do the same thing, so relationships are quick to form. We hiked with journalists, meteorologists, athletes, filmmakers, and the like. There was an overwhelming sense of camaraderie. Groups that came together separated and everyone had blended into one. We're taking a little walk around the lake to see what fish we can see. Baron almost brought his Tinkara rod, but didn't. On this quiet morning, I woke up thinking about how safe a tent makes me feel. It's such a simple structure that you can stuff into a backpack, made from just lightweight, flimsy cloth. And yet, it provides such a significant feeling of security. Kind of wild.
Remember when I was sprinting to keep up with Baron? My boots became loose and I didn't want to slow him down in order to retie them. So I got some gnarly blisters and I even ended up losing one of my toenails. Had I known the importance of keeping your boots tight, I'd definitely have stopped to retie them because this really sucked. Do you want me to get a close up when you do it? Okay, probably not. <laughs> Thankfully, though, there was a medical tent at every checkpoint and campsite, so I stopped in to see Dana before heading out on the final day of the Classic. Is it my good side? You're, you're looking You perfect. are so cute. You look like you have not been out here for long. <laughs> it's the pink. I'm so happy every time I wear it that it just, like, makes everything better. On backpacking trips, we always bring this basic first aid kit, plus a lighter, a Garmin inReach, hand warmers, a knife, and supplements like activated charcoal, ibuprofen, and electrolytes. I kept my boots super tight on day three and retightened them a few times because it was a day of steep downhills. Many, many times on the trail, I've become overwhelmed with gratitude. Gratitude for the beauty, the people, my strength, time checked out from technology and self-imposed responsibility. There is an entire natural world outside my daily reality. No one instructs a river to flow, it simply does. Pike asleep and wake with no alarm. Clouds form as they please and release at will. The plants feed the bugs, the bugs feed the birds. It's a community and a culture of its own, functioning on its own, governed by nothing but the sun and the moon. I'm lucky, so lucky to be here, remembering, reconnecting, experiencing such detailed simplicity and complex ease with which this natural world operates. Leaving the final checkpoint, how do you feel? Kind of sad, kind of happy. It but is always kind of a mixed bag of emotions at the end of a backpacking trip. Yeah, we were just talking to somebody about how this is definitely type two fun, where it's super challenging and you kind of got to embrace the suck sometimes. And then when you get out of it, you have the best stories and fondest memories, so. Let's go. Let's do it. On finishing the hike, we loaded up onto shuttle buses and drove back through the mountains to Trekker's Inn. <laughs> yes, we made it! <laughs> we made it to the car! <laughs> I had several favorite moments from the Classic USA, but nothing compared to the sheer joy and elation of the final meal together back at Trekker's Inn. My happiness there was a highlight of my entire 2022 year, but so was the trek and the experience overall. I couldn't have imagined that backpacking with 75 people could possibly be so rewarding. I felt uplifted and encouraged to continue exploring and building relationships with others to get outside and stay outside. That final meal was that happy, sad feeling that you get on the last day of summer camp. I was overflowing with joy and at the same time, heartbroken that it was all over. It was so hard to leave. Follow the link in the description if you wanna learn more about the classic and get some tickets. If you're into backpacking, or better yet, if you want to get into backpacking, a Fjall Raven classic is something you've got to do. And maybe we'll see you there. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our channel and check out our other backpacking videos some of my most favorite videos to make. <laughs> That's dumb. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.